And welcome to Hannity and buckle up for a big week on Thursday. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis will square off against California Governor Gavin Newsom for what we're calling a red state, blue state debate moderated by yours truly. Whatever you might think about Gavin Newsom, you will definitely hear a far more coherent um, individual than, let's say, the guy that is living at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But anyway, it will be a fun debate. Hope you'll join us on Thursday night from Georgia. Now, today, a very confused, confounded Joe Biden telling voters that the economy is doing great, in spite of how all of us feel and what we see every single day, telling us prices are down. Americans have more money in their pockets, none of which is true. Coming up, we'll break down the latest dismal economic numbers. We'll give you the truth, including what is a sharp spike in the cost of food. Plus, more bad polls for Joe Biden and more panic among the Democrats and the media mob. But first, tonight breaking, the ceasefire in Gaza has now been extended for two more days after 11 more hostages were freed earlier today. The fourth hostage release. So far, Hamas has returned 69 of the roughly 240 people they kidnapped from southern Israel. In exchange, Israel has released a whopping 117 Palestinians that are actually in prison, including terrorists and violent criminals. One such terrorist who was severely disfigured after detonating a car bomb at a checkpoint was actually given a hero's welcome upon her return. Another terrorist was serving a 13-year prison sentence for attempting to stab Israelis during an attack conducted alongside her cousin. In contrast, Hamas freed women, young children, toddlers, uh, who they abducted from their homes after murdering, in many cases, their parents right in front of them. Dozens of women and children were held in squalid conditions in Gaza for seven weeks. Food we now know was limited. Plastic chairs were used as beds. Hostages were denied the use of bathrooms for hours on end. Many of the hostages lost what is a considerable amount of weight, and some were held in complete darkness for over a month. During their release, Hamas forced their captives to hold their hands, and they demanded they politely wave goodbye as they were whisked away to freedom by the International Red Cross. Now, think about that. Hamas killed some of their parents a few weeks later. They are forcing these kids to smile, hold hands, and wave goodbye to their captors. It is evil. It is ugly. It is twisted, repulsive. But last week, one idiotic British journalist was more concerned that the lives of the Israeli hostages were being valued way too much. Watch this and watch the response. I was speaking to a hostage negotiator this morning. He made the comparison between the 50 hostages, hostages that Hamas has promised, um, promised to release, as opposed to the 150 prisoners that are Palestinians that Israel has said that it will release. And he made the comp comparison between the numbers and the fact that does Israel not think that Palestinian lives are valued as highly as Israeli lives? That is an astonishing accusation. If we could release one prisoner for every one hostage, we would obviously do that. We are operating in horrific circumstances. We're not choosing to release these prisoners who have blood on their hands. We are talking about people who have been convicted of stabbing and shooting attacks. What a disgusting question. Not surprising, sadly. Of course, uh, this was not a fair trade. For example, on one side, you have the release of two what, innocent three-year-old twins from Israel. On the other, you have two Palestinian terrorists. Uh, any of that seem fair to you? But in all of his infinite wisdom, your President Joe Biden knows exactly why Hamas took hostages and murdered, what, close to 1,400 innocent men, women, and children on October the 7th, because according to Joe, Hamas, they were just trying to disrupt Biden's achievements in the Middle East. What achievements? Take a look. There's an overwhelming desire on the part of the region to let me back up. I'm, I cannot prove what I'm about to say. But I believe one of the reasons why Hamas struck when they did was they knew that I was working very closely with the Saudis and others in the region to bring peace to the region by having recognition of Israel and Israel's right to exist. 
All right, but here's the truth. The evil, ignorant terrorists of Hamas, they hate Israel. They've hated Jews. They want to wipe Israel off the map, period, end of sentence. They state it. It is in their charter. That's what they say. That's what they have demonstrated. And because Joe Biden freed up $50 billion for the mullahs in Iran, who back Hamas and all these other terror groups financially and also militarily, the terrorists had plenty of resources to carry out this massive attack. America and the world is less and less peaceful with Biden in charge. As former Defense Secretary Robert Gates famously warned, Biden always seems to make the wrong foreign policy decisions he has throughout his career. And now amid rampant anti-Semitism, Biden is reportedly now apologizing to Muslim American leaders for questioning death toll numbers provided by the terror group Hamas. Well, uh, that is about as weak and pathetic excuse for an American president as I've seen in my lifetime, and a guy constantly getting bullied at home and abroad and seems to do nothing about it. For example, look at the Middle East today. American soldiers, they have been attacked a whopping 73 times since October the 17th, with little response from the administration outside of a few targeted strikes, like at empty warehouses in remote locations. Meanwhile, just a few days after meeting with Biden in California, now China's dictator, President Xi, once again, he's ramping up hostilities in the South China Sea, threatening a U.S. warship in international waters, and then demanding that the U.S. apologize. So what's Biden going to do about that? Nothing. No words, no actions, just doddering along, hoping for the best. And as a result, the world is a more dangerous place.